what were your takeaways that left you a little bit angry? <laughs> a little bit angry. Well, I'm I'm pretty patient. I really am, particularly with you know a team this young and and as many pieces that had to figure itself out. Um, but I feel like we have learned some lessons through enough five-point losses, four-point losses, three-point losses, that we would, would be cleaning this up by now. And my, my biggest um, you know, thing that I, I probably got on them about the hardest is that it's a, it's a, it's a foundational principle of our program that every single trip down the floor, we do the best we can. Sometimes that works out, sometimes it doesn't. But I have to be convinced that was the best you could do. Um, and that's not happening. There's too many. We, we're not good enough to, our margin of error is not, not large enough to afford to give away trips, to have trips where we don't, we don't do things we're capable of doing. And so that's happening too often. And it's happening in in chunks in the game where it's costing us and then and then we're behind and then we're playing you know catch up and clearly we demonstrate over and over again that we're capable of of a higher level of play um and so that higher level of play has to be happening on a more consistent basis and so that was a lot of what the messaging was <laughs> were the lapses on a particular side of the court in your opinion i thought they were both 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 offense and defense you know careless turnovers or we don't turn the ball over. That's just that's just something that not not carelessly. You know, we, we might turn it over trying to do the right thing, and and a turnover when you're trying to do the right thing is perfectly okay. Um, but and, and the times that that we don't get back on defense and you know match up soon enough or or amp it up to that nine ten. I always I always put put uh, defensive efforts on a meter. You know, ten being your maximum effort. And understanding, particularly in transition defense, that you have to be you have to you have to crank it up to a ten as quickly as possible because with a team like this, that's when they're at their best. Usually, if you can get them into some sort of half court action, um, you're going to be okay, you know. And it's when you're soft there at the beginning. And I thought we were way too soft, way too often, particularly in the third quarter. And then the boards, the boards. It, it's kind of like. Maybe maybe we don't get the board, but you better you better do everything you can to keep your kid from getting the board. And so it is, I thought that uh, their number twelve just you know was she was just out working everybody on the floor. She was just really working. And and I told her I said I, you know I have a lot of respect for how hard you work. And that number twelve just she was everywhere. She was everywhere. She needs to be playing. For us, <laughs> she's really our kind of player. On the offensive side, though, I mean, how much of it is just you just haven't found that player a consistent score, or you know, and tonight there's a lot of just missed baskets, Miss, that missed shots, necessarily... missed open shots. Yeah, and is there a fix for that, or is it just what you have to? Do you have to make up in those other areas, and is that maybe where your frustration comes from? Yeah, you, we we have to. We we know that um, that. We're going to struggle, you know. Sometimes hitting shots, and so, so we cannot afford to give easy buckets to the other guy. Bottom line, and that not not that that's not a good offensive team because that's a darn good offensive team. <laughs> um, but I still thought there was too many times we made it way too easy. It, it didn't have to be that easy, and so uh, and. and that frustration with us hitting shots, that goes back to a lot of me always challenging them about, I understand you have a lot on your plate. I understand you have a great deal to do, but every other team in this conference is spending hours in the gym getting shots up. And we're going to miss shots if we don't find a way to put the extra time in. So that has continued to be to be the um, siren call or whatever <laughs> um, with the hope that that this team can get as much figured out as possible, but that there's enough carryover that it can help us down the road. Yeah. Well, there's a deadline for this season. You know, <laughs> there's a deadline. To, yeah. Do you think – is everything kind of positioned to where you guys are so close that if something can click, 
you can like if we made shots <laughs> yeah. i mean if you get hot or if i don't know <laughs> well <laughs> even else. even even with this this game i mean even as poorly as i thought we played in the third quarter and being behind 10 you know nikki had to look at a wide open three and and camry had a had a jump shot that was she normally makes you know nine times out of 10 and um you hit those two shots maybe you have a different game so yes if if it were to click and if we were to hit some shots sure some things some things could turn around but i don't like to ever be that kind of team that leaves its destiny in in the hands of fate that particular night you know i want want to be able to to control more elements of the game we know that it's a huge challenge for us on the boards but if we know that and we talk about it every day and we work on it every day <laughs> then you feel like there should at least be some progress towards people you know being a little bit better at 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 least keeping it keeping their guy off you know even even if we can't we can't fly through the air like 12 and 13 and and uh number 3 and um you know it that's that's not how we're going to get them but we've got to figure out a way to keep the other guy from getting them and then of course we're we count a great deal on forcing turnovers coach you did have a little bit of help coming from the stands i know you kind of talked about this the other night but did you did you did you remember how loud you know, young girls can be age seven yes. to ten when they start screaming. <laughs> well, it would have been fun if we'd had as many here as we expected to have here. But with the two-hour delay for most of the schools, they had to cancel um, because we originally thought we'd have six or seven hundred. So I was very happy to see those young people in the stands, and they did a great job on the free throws. <laughs> they, they did a great job, and didn't didn't make a miss, but they tried. So they did their part certainly. So, so that that part was a lot of fun. Uh, this was uh, Mike from New Mexico had asked to play the game early, and and I told him we would do it, and we would just make it our a field trip game. And unfortunately, it snowed. But um, but I, you know, he likes playing at this time. I'd I'd play at this time all the time if if the rest of the conference wanted to do it, but they don't. So, anyways, it was just, it was. I think the frustration is coming from just my sense that we should have learned these lessons by now. You know, I kind of was okay with it at the beginning, and now it's time to say, hey, we've, we've figured these things out. I do think New Mexico is playing, gosh, you know, just about as well or better than anybody in the conference right now. I really think they're playing well. Um, and that would have been a huge win for us to get that because, again, we're you're talking about – four players on that team that have played together for three years and it, it would have been a good win they've got some they've got some kids that can really play did you get a headache you feared or were the 200 students not enough <laughs> no unfortunately <laughs> but they they did it was great to have them there i appreciate it. i hope they come back <laughs> well you know on that note uh i was I talked to some of the kids, and there was one young lady in particular who said that she came in, she didn't realize it was a women's basketball game until she walked in. <laughs> that really excited her. And then oh, she cool. said that watching the game, she said that, you know, she said that one of these days that maybe she could be on the court playing. And I just want to know, like, when you hear something like that, that it's, you know, that you're playing, it's, it's, it's inspiring young people, like, what is that? What does that mean to you just as, as a coach? Well, absolutely. Uh, that, uh, as especially our game, I, I think that we had a time of being, I, I've always believed women's basketball is a community sport, m more so even than, than an institution sport because um, people can relate to it a little bit better. It's, you know, it's played below the rim, not above the rim, and and we have to just play so doggone hard, you know. <laughs> so I think that um, it, it always means a great deal when you, when you do have young people in the community get excited about the game because they see they see that they could be doing that someday. So I'm that makes me that does warm my heart. To, it, it takes a lot to warm my heart right now. So that's that's uh, that's a good message. So thank you. <laughs> Coach, we've got 
senior day coming up here on Saturday. Um, we're honoring a pair of a pair of y'all seniors. I um, was wondering if maybe you could just touch a little bit on their impact on the program and, and maybe some of the some of the some of the things they may leave behind as they go. I I think th both those young people are are uh, they're going to be great officers. Let me tell you. Um, they have the work ethic, they have the um, intelligence, they have the um, just the commitment to doing the right thing, being the right person. Uh, I just think they're going to be tremendous officers, and it's been really fun to see to see both of them grow so much. Camry from being extremely sensitive and shy to now being much more assured of herself and, and much more capable of handling the the bumps and bruises of life, you know, and and Nikki from being sort of a role player type who who just um, maybe didn't think a whole lot of herself as a player to being somebody that recognizes she has she has a ton to give and comes out and gives it consistently. I mean, she Nikki probably plays up to her ceiling uh, uh, as much or more than anybody in on this particular team, night after night. Um, and sometimes, you know, it'll be a little extra than it is other times, but she, she, she gets out there and, and gets it done. And, and so, I, and, and I think that Camry is, is, is a, uh, you know, a terrific score and we need her to score really for her to give what she's best capable of giving. Um, and she kind of struggled tonight, but it, it, both of them, and, and I think, the thing you always have to admire about seniors at the academy is that they, they stuck it out. It's not easy to do here. It's not easy to make that kind of commitment year after year after year and to keep your grades at a level that, you know, you're not in trouble or you're not, <laughs> not ne neither one of them has ever been in trouble. <laughs> and, and so sometimes it's, it's just an accomplishment to go from your freshman to your senior year, still be there, never be in trouble, graduate on time, being, being able to call the shots pretty much for your future because you've done such an exceptional job, and that's what both of them have done. So, kind of looked like the game late third, early fourth, they kind of went on that run where they were able to kind of get away from you. What, what, what happened during that stretch? I don't know. We weren't hitting shots, and we had to let up on defense a little bit. A couple of sh um, cuts that we missed. Um, they got some O boards. All things we talked about before the game. Uh, keys to winning and we let it up for just a few minutes and that kind of ends up being the game right there. Yeah, because it looked like like right around five minute mark, you guys kind of reasserted control. You got within, I think, four or five points in there. Um, like, w you know, what changed in that in that final stretch? I mean, Coach G just talked about in the locker room, like when we turn the Jets on, we can outplay anyone in the conference. It's just a matter of getting all five players on the floor at the same time to dial in and play the best basketball we can play. When we get to like four minutes left and we're like, there's four minutes left, this is the game, everyone kind of turns it up a notch. I know it's frustrating to go through that, but you, get, you had a, a crowd of students from <laughs> District 11, and every single time New Mexico had a free throw, uh, there was some high-pitched reactions. Uh, what did you think about that attempt by, by the students to really throw them off at the free throw line? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we loved it. It's great having them out here and anything to do to put the other team off their game. And, hey, little kids screaming would get me, so. Had you forgotten how high-pitched you can be at about <laughs> 7 to 10 years old? Yeah, it's been a second. Um, you know, I was talking to some of the kids, and one of them said that when they came over here, they didn't, you know, they just knew it was a basketball game. When they saw it was the women's team, she was really excited, and she said that, it made her want to grow up and be a basketball player one day. And so to, to, when you hear something like that, that you're making that kind of an impact without even knowing it, like what goes through your mind? That's awesome. I mean, just having them out here is cool to get them to see it, especially younger girls. And to hear that like we, just by doing what we love, can kind of inspire someone else to get out there and try something is awesome because I mean, we need more people, like, sports is great. We need more people in it, like women, men, everyone, because it's just such a good thing, like, for developing leadership and to grow up playing it, because I loved it. Nikki, you got 
one more here in Clune. Yeah, I know. Where's your head at and uh, how are we feeling? I don't know. It's been a long four years and I want to go out with the bang. So I'm feeling good. I feel like I'm playing the best basketball I've been playing since being here. And I just hope the rest of the team gets up for the end games of the season. Late third, early fourth, they make that run and pull away from you guys. And you guys made a strong run at the end there. But like what happened in that end third, early fourth part? I think we just, we stopped making stops. We, they ended up getting a bunch of um, scores in transition, and, and that's where we stopped. I, you know, we lost our focus just a little bit in transition, and they went on a run. And um, we needed to just buckle down and, and make sure we had our girls. How frustrating was it? Because you guys played really well. It was just that mm -hmm. stretch. Like, yeah. how frustrating is it when you have just that stretch that kind of, like, does the whole game? It's like Coach talks about all the time is, you know, we will be a team for, you know, 30 minutes of the game, and 10 minutes we let them come back, and, and, and we end up losing the game by five. It's just, it is frustrating because you work so hard, and then, and then uh, just a small little stretch in the third quarter will end up losing the game for you. You did have some help in the stands. <laughs> Every time they shot a free throw, uh, we could hear the screaming. I'm curious, do you, did you forget how high-pitched elementary school voices can get <laughs> I was sitting on the bench during a free throw and I saw the thing go like the noise um, the noise meter was going off and I was I was like oh wow <laughs> yeah no they were loud over there I appreciated it they're like our secret weapon were you were you surprised being on the bench you're like man they're loud yeah I was like oh uh, we should bring kids to every game <laughs> so I was talking to uh, one of the students and she said that uh, she only knew they were coming to a basketball game. And when she saw that it was a women's basketball game, she got really excited. And she said that seeing you made her think that one day she could be on this court playing basketball. When you hear that as a player that like you're playing and without even realizing it, you're, you're, you're inspiring a, a student, like what is, what goes through your head when you hear something like that? I mean, things like that, it makes, you know, hard work, it makes everything worth it. <laughs> like, sometimes you, you, you know, after a loss like that, it's easy to be like, yeah, well, like, what am I doing right now? <laughs> um, and then you'll go out there and you'll, and you'll clap the, the kids' hands and you're like, okay, <laughs> I get it, I get it. Um, it, makes, it makes doing what we do so much easier, so much worth it. We're coming up on the coming up on the last one here at Clinton. I know. Um, how are you feeling? Where's your head at? I I'm out here. I want to I want to get this last one. That's for sure. Um, but I have my my family here, and I hear that Air Force song. So I'm only gonna hear it so many more times. I'm only gonna hear the third verse so many more times. And so I want to take it all in, and just play play my heart out, and, and get my team to do the same. Take it all in one more game. <laughs>